Before we jump into game analysis in this position, uh, let me mention the openings that I used in this tournament. So that was uh, three games of Queen's Indian, Peart's, Briar, two Grunfeld variation games, Queen's Gambit accepted and Queen's Gambit declined. So most of the games that I played were facing uh, Grandmasters and uh, you guys going to see a variety of tactical as well as positional ideas. So before we uh, look at this game right here, let's just see how this arises. I continued with d4 on move 1, d5, c4, challenging the c5 pawn. Grandmaster Gurevich later on in the competition chose e6, defending the pawn on d5. My opponent in this game, David Lucky, chose d takes c. This move wins a pawn and gives up the center. To make sure you guys all get the idea of the center, this is the main center, and we also got this adjacent squares that are bigger center. And we could mention this whole range right here is are the squares that are going to be relevant to the central domination. So here, after d takes c, black gives up that central control to a certain extent, and white can certainly expand with e4 in this position. Now, whenever you give up the center, you want to challenge it. Boom, e5 right here. Hitting that pawn on d4 and creating some counterplay. I'm getting proactive about the idea of e5, playing knight f3, developing a piece. This is all logical, hitting that pawn on c4. Doesn't make much sense to try to defend it since a4 followed by b3 breaks the structure. e6 opening up the bishop and black is ready to create some counterplay right there. So here, you know, before allowing black to come in the game with a queen's gambit build up, white chose to create the play in the center, distracting black, creating momentum right there. So this is uh, not the main line, e4 is more of a novelty type move. Quite a few games have been played there, but it's quite often a surprise. Queen e2 is a possibility. It's a major move actually. b5, bishop b3. The idea of queen e2 is to bring the rook to d1. And here, after the after knight c3, queen b8, or bishop d6. There's quite a few other moves. Queen b6 is possible too. White can continue with e4, d5. The results are generally um, lead, lead to equality in this position. So I'm looking for a nice battle and continue e4. My opponent chooses not to take the pawn on e4 and takes on d4 instead. Knight e4, queen e2. Putting some pressure right there on e-file if knight f6, setting the rook on the d-file. So here d takes c is a threat, regaining a pawn, and d5 is a major threat as well. After knight e4, d5 right away is possible too, with a very good play for white. b5 is a possibility, we're going to see this move later on in our analysis. C takes D, pawn pushes forward, knight retreats, and I get to regain the pawn in the center. I've actually played a game like this a while ago, more than 10 15 years ago, at a youth championship. And my opponent continued uh, very similarly here. I think he chose queen c7, uh, putting, the, putting some pressure on e5. So th those are possibilities for black. We're not going to get into that. Let's we'll just continue with the game. Rook e1. So here white centralizes, preparing the possibility of queen g4, hitting the pawn on g7, and generally it would be a great idea to get 
the light pieces in the game. So whenever you face a situation in the opening, you want to take care of your pieces. The pieces got to come out as soon as possible. Queen c7, putting some pressure on e5, possibly creating some threats towards the bishop on c4 indirectly. White continues queen g4, not taking queen c7 very seriously. So the pawn on g7 is hanging. Obvious that capturing the pawn on e5 is going to be a losing proposition for black, where queen g7 just opens up black's king tremendously. Black continues g6, and it's always nice to see those moves played by your opponent. g6 weakens black squares, obviously, so creates weaknesses all around black's king and limits black's possibilities for defense. So don't, pawn, don't move the pawns on the side where you weaker is the rule for defense. g6. I continue to develop the bishop, defend my pawn on e5, and at the same time putting pressure along the diagonal, indirectly affecting the queen right there. 